The discovery of the Mislia cave hominin in the Middle East sent shockwaves through the world of paleoanthropology. A single upper jaw with teeth, dated to around 194,000 years ago, suggested that Homo sapiens, or at least a population strikingly similar to them, had left Africa far earlier than previously thought. But was this truly an exit, or could it have been the remnants of a larger, lost population that had already spread across parts of Asia? Could this population have even migrated into Africa, rather than the other way around? In Mislia Cave, perched on the cliffs of Mount Carmel, a jawbone whispers tales of early humans venturing beyond Africa far earlier than we once thought. Dated to between 177,000 and 194,000 years ago, this fossil, known as Mislia I, stands as the oldest, undisputed, modern human remains found outside Africa. But it's not alone in challenging our understanding of human history. Across the globe in India, Stone tools unearthed at Atirampakam stretch back to 385,000 to 172,000 years ago, hinting at a sophisticated population thriving in South Asia around the same time. The Mislia cave discovery is a game-changer. This was no failed expansion from Africa. This was a long-term stable population that likely expanded across southern Eurasia. The jawbones features are unmistakably Homo sapiens, a parabolic dental arch, no shoveling on the teeth, and a size and shape that fit our species. But there's a twist. Some traits overlap with Neanderthals, raising the question, was Mislia I pure Homo sapiens, or evidence of early interbreeding with other hominins? And then there's the puzzle of Herto and Omo II in Africa, fossils from 160,000 to 233,000 years ago that marked the presence of Homo sapiens on the continent. Could these far-flung discoveries weave a radical new story, one where modern humans or a modern human-like species lived outside Africa 200,000 years ago, and perhaps even migrated into Africa, shaping the populations we see in Herto and Omo? For decades, the dominant narrative has been that Homo sapiens originated in Africa around 200,000 years ago and eventually migrated outward, replacing or assimilating archaic hominins like Neanderthals and Denisovans. But what if the story is more complex? What if, instead of one-way traffic out of Africa, there were waves of migration in both directions? Now let's shift our focus to the tools found in Mislia Cave. These aren't crude hand axes, but finely crafted implements made with the Levallois technique, a method where a core is prepared to strike off sharp, predetermined flakes. This sophisticated approach is a hallmark of the Middle Paleolithic, linked to both modern humans and Neanderthals in Africa and Europe. At Mislia Cave, these tools date to the same window as the jawbone, around 180,000 years ago. Why is this significant? It ties the fossil to a technological leap, suggesting that whoever lived here wasn't just passing through. They were skilled hunters, exploiting the landscape for aurochs, deer and gazelles. Could this mean a stable population of Homo sapiens was already established in the Levant, a key corridor between Africa and Eurasia, 200,000 years ago? Evidence from India adds another layer of intrigue. Levallois stone tools discovered in the subcontinent date back at least 172,000 years, and possibly as much as 385,000 years, long before modern human expansion was thought to have reached that far. That's a staggering timeline, overlapping with Mislia and pushing the presence of advanced tool-making deep into Asia. These aren't the hefty, Acheulean hand axes of earlier hominins, but smaller, sharper Levallois tools, eerily similar to those in Africa and Europe from the same era. Who made them? Without fossils, we're left guessing. Were they archaic humans like Homo heidelbergensis, independently innovating? Or could they be early Homo sapiens, venturing far from Africa? The timing, 385,000 to 172,000 years, straddles the emergence of modern humans in Africa, dated to around 315,000 years ago at Jebel Irhud in Morocco. Could these tools mark an early exodus, one that reached India's shores 200,000 years ago? Some of these artifacts appear remarkably similar to Middle Stone Age tools from Africa, raising the question, were these technologies developed independently, or were they carried by early Homo sapiens, 
or a closely related hominin who had already left Africa. More provocatively, could some of these early populations have later migrated back into Africa, contributing to the fossil record at sites like Herto and Omo II? Indeed, the plot thickens when we consider the fossils from Herto and Omo II in Ethiopia. Herto, dated to 154,000 to 160,000 years ago, includes skulls with modern traits. High foreheads, flat faces, labelled Homo sapiens idaltu, a transitional form. Omo II, from the Omo Kibish site, dates to around 195,000 years ago, recently revised to 233,000 years. These are among the earliest undisputed Homo sapiens in Africa, yet their ages hover close to Mislia and Atirampakam. So, what if the story isn't as simple as humans evolving in Africa and then spreading out? What if a population, Homo sapiens or a close cousin, lived outside Africa 200,000 years ago and then moved into Africa contributing to the gene pool that produced Herto and Omo? It's a radical idea, flipping the out-of-Africa narrative on its head. Could migration have been a two-way street? The Herto fossils from Ethiopia, dated to about 160,000 years ago, are among the most important early Homo sapiens remains found in Africa. Similarly, Omo II, with a potential age of 200,000 years, represents another crucial piece of the puzzle. But what if these fossils were not the origin point of Homo sapiens, but rather a snapshot of a population that had already been shaped by earlier dispersals? If populations like those represented at Mislia Cave had already existed outside of Africa for tens of thousands of years, is it possible that some lineages returned? mingling with those in East Africa and contributing to what we recognize as modern humans today? Fossil evidence alone cannot answer this question definitively, but genetic studies hint at a more complex back-and-forth movement. Some studies have found traces of early Eurasian and Neanderthal ancestry in African genomes. Could this be the genetic fingerprint of a wave of early Homo sapiens who first left Africa and then, generations later, returned? The discovery of the sophisticated stone tools in India that predate 172,000 years ago forces us to reconsider the technological and demographic landscape of this period. Traditionally, archaeologists associated such tool-making with Homo sapiens, but if modern humans were not supposed to be in India at this time, then who was responsible? Some scholars argue that a yet undiscovered population of early Homo sapiens, or a closely related species, was present in South Asia, challenging the idea that Africa was the sole cradle of modern human technology. Others propose that populations of early Homo sapiens, already existing outside Africa, developed their own tool cultures independently. Either way, the presence of advanced lithic industries in India at such an early date suggests that large-scale migrations or long-term occupations were happening well before the traditional out-of-Africa timeline. What kind of world did these early populations inhabit? Was it a Garden of Eden? Climate models and sea-level reconstructions suggest that the Persian Gulf and the western coast of India could have been thriving ecosystems, supporting abundant food sources and providing a refuge during harsh glacial cycles. During periods of lower sea levels, the Persian Gulf would have been a vast, fertile basin with rivers and lakes, an environment that could have supported human populations for tens of thousands of years. The Levallois connection is a tantalizing thread. In Africa, this technique emerges around 400,000 years ago, linked to archaic humans at sites like Cap Thurin and Kathupan in East Africa. At Jebel Irhud, it's tied to early Homo sapiens by 315,000 years. In India, it appears by 385,000 years, and at Mislia, by 180,000 years. Why does this technology pop up across such vast distances at roughly the same time? One answer is independent invention. Different hominins, from Neanderthals to archaic sapiens, stumbling upon the same idea. But another possibility is cultural diffusion or migration. If a sapiens-like group carried Levallois from Asia to Africa, it could link Atiram Pakam, Mislia, and the Ethiopian fossils. What do you think? Could a shared technology hint at a shared population moving across continents? 
If the Persian Gulf and surrounding regions was a lost world of early human activity, it could have served as a launching point for migrations both into Africa and into South and East Asia. Likewise, the western coast of India, rich in marine resources, could have been a continuous habitation zone, explaining why advanced stone tool cultures persisted there for so long. Could these areas have been where Homo sapiens truly emerged, rather than in Africa? While this remains speculative, it aligns with a growing body of evidence suggesting that human evolution was not confined to a single geographical location. Instead, it may have been a diffuse, networked process, with populations moving back and forth, exchanging genes and culture across thousands of miles. The discovery of early Homo sapiens fossils outside Africa, the presence of advanced stone tools in India, and the shifting climates that made the Persian Gulf and coastal India fertile grounds for human habitation all point to a more complex picture of our origins. Rather than a single migration event out of Africa, human history may be a story of expansion, contraction, extinction, and intermixing across vast distances. Around 200,000 years ago, the world was in the grip of marine isotope stage 6, a cold, dry period. Africa's tropics thinned, opening paths for migration. In the Levant, Mislia's inhabitants hunted in a milder climate, while India's streams supported Atirampakam's toolmakers. As this stage waned, wetter conditions returned to Africa, perhaps luring populations from Asia. The Omo fossils, dated to 195,000 years, align with this shift, found in layers tied to a rainier past. Could environmental push and pull have sent a sapiens-like group into Africa, reshaping its human landscape? Archaeology adds fuel to the fire. The Atirampakam tools transition from Acheulean to Levallois over 200,000 years, mirroring shifts in Africa. Miss Leah's toolkit matches this sophistication, while Herto and Omo show Middle Stone Age tools by 160,000 years. This technological thread suggests continuity or convergence. Critics argue the Indian tools might be transitional, not fully Middle Paleolithic, hinting at local evolution. But the overlap in timing and style with Mislia and Africa begs the question, were these innovations homegrown or carried by wanderers? Without fossils, we're left speculating. Could a smoking gun lie buried, waiting to confirm an ancient migration? Let's zoom out and ponder the implications. If Homo sapiens or a sapiens-like group lived outside Africa 200,000 years ago, as Mislia and Atirampakam suggest, our origin story gets messier. The traditional out-of-Africa model, Homo sapiens evolving in Africa, then spreading, might need a rewrite. What if our species emerged across a broader stage, with populations in Asia and the Levant contributing to the African mix? Herto and Omo too could be the result of this reflux, blending local and incoming traits. Or perhaps these early explorers were a sister lineage, lost to time but leaving echoes in stone and bone. How would this change our view of ourselves, as a species born in one cradle or forged across continents? The gaps in the record keep us guessing. Mislia has one jawbone, Atirampakam no fossils, and Herto and Omo lack DNA to test back migration. Future digs could tip the scales. Imagine finding a sapien skull in India from 200,000 years ago, or Asian genetic markers in Omo too. Until then, we wrestle with possibilities. Could Denisovans or Neanderthals have made those Indian tools, muddying the sapien story? Or did our ancestors take a detour, thriving outside Africa before circling back? The Levallois link spanning Israel, India and Ethiopia hints at a connected world. But was it people or ideas on the move? Miss Leah One gazes out from 180,000 years ago, a pioneer in a strange land. Atirampakam's tools gleam with forgotten hands, while Herto and Omo stand as sentinels of Africa's sapiens dawn. Together they challenge us. Did humans leave Africa early, only to return? Could 200,000 years ago mark not just an exit, but a homecoming? This isn't just about bones and stones. It's about us, our roots stretching across a restless earth. What do you think? Were we always African? Or did our story begin beyond the horizon, 
looping back to where it all started. The caves and sediments hold their breath, waiting for us to dig deeper. Did early Homo sapiens populations migrate into Africa, rather than exclusively out of it? Were places like the Persian Gulf and the coasts of India, Refugia, where human populations thrived and evolved before moving into Africa? And if we rethink the Garden of Eden as a vast network of habitable regions rather than a single birthplace, how does that change our understanding of what it means to be human? As more fossils and artifacts come to light, we may soon find that the history of our species is far richer and more interconnected than we ever imagined. And perhaps instead of looking for a single origin point, we should be looking for the threads that connect ancient populations across continents, weaving together the true story of Homo sapiens.